Today I'm going to be comparing three different types of subwoofers from Hertz, Rockford, and SCAR. All the subwoofers came with their own enclosures, so there's no need to purchase a separate enclosure or build a custom one. The Rockford sub stands out because it also comes with a built-in amplifier. I will not only be giving my opinion on how each sub sounded, but I will also show how each sub performed using Room EQ Wizard or REW. I'm doing this comparison because back in March, I began hunting for a new subwoofer. I wanted to upgrade my Kicker Comp R. The Kicker Comp R is a very nice subwoofer and the enclosure is wonderfully built, but I felt I wanted something more. I not only wanted to switch my subwoofer, but I decided to change out my amplifiers, DSP, and clean up my amp board. With this in mind, I sold my audio control 6-channel amp and Alpine mono amp to get an Audison SR5.600 5-channel amplifier. This amp would power my front tweeters, mids, and subwoofer. I would let the factory Bose amp power the rear speakers for rear fill. This amp is compact and allowed me to turn off all crossovers so I could let the DSP handle all aspects of processing for the speakers. The DSP I chose was a Mini DSP 8x12. I also added a U-Mic 1 to my order so that I could use it with the REW tuning software. I chose the Mini DSP for its price, number of inputs and outputs, plus it came with a very nice remote display. I didn't purchase Direct Live. I thought I would try out the DSP without the auto-tune feature first, since you can add it later as a separate purchase. I will leave a link to all the items discussed in this video in the video description. For the amp board, I switched out my wood board for a lighter ABS plastic sheet. The sheet I purchased was 24 inch by 24 inch by quarter inch sheet. This fit perfectly in the Elantra's wheel well. While adding the new amp board, I ran new signal and speaker wires to and from the Bose amplifier. I installed ferrules on the ends of the wires and then wrapped them in wire loom and Tessa tape. Finally, I added a six-way fuse box that allowed me to downsize my wire to 16 gauge so I could cleanly wire in the DSP's power and ground wires. If you follow my channel, you'll know that I posted a video a few months ago showing how to run speaker wire from the front doors to an aftermarket amplifier. In that video, I installed new Hertz Milli Pro component speakers. I found I liked the quality and sound so much of the Milli Pros, I decided to try the Hertz Milli Pro shallow mount subwoofer with mounting enclosure. Out of the three subwoofers featured in this video, the Hertz is the most expensive. It is also the subwoofer that took up the least amount of space. After unboxing the sub, I was impressed by how slim the enclosure was and how well it was made. The stitched Hertz logo on the top of the box was a nice touch. This enclosure can be installed with the sub facing towards the rear of the trunk, or by installing the included feet, it can be installed with the sub facing down. These options made the subwoofer the most versatile of the three subs tested. I began testing the Hertz subwoofer in the down firing position. When I show the REW results later, you'll see that down firing or facing the sub towards the rear of the trunk made very little difference in the level of bass performance. The subwoofer sounded clean and with the sealed enclosure provided a better overall frequency response versus the Kicker Comp R ported enclosure. When playing frequencies below 40 Hertz, you could really feel the bass. By using the Audison amp, I was sending 550 watts to this 500 watt RMS Hertz subwoofer. This was a good match of power for the sub. The positives of the subwoofer would be its compact size, light weight, versatile mounting options, build quality, clean output, ability to hit low frequencies, and finally, the ease in which you're able to blend the subwoofer with your front stage. For the negatives, price would be the number one negative. This is the most expensive subwoofer in the review by far at $700 retail before adding an amplifier. 
and the only other negative is the SPL output of the sub. While it's e easy to blend with my front stage using my DSP, it was the most difficult to get the volume of bass I wanted. I feel this sub would be best suited for a hatchback or SUV to get the most out of it. Also, the enclosure allows a hatchback or SUV buyer to stack items on top of the enclosure, thus aiding and giving back space in the vehicle. I tested this theory by putting the sub in my Weiss Veloster N hatchback, and I was able to get better volume in that type of vehicle over the trunk of a sedan. So with the Hertz, I was able to achieve better sounding bass performance over the Kicker Comp R, but not the volume that I wanted. For the next sub, I decided to go back to something that I know very well, and that's the Rockford Fosgate Power P300 series of subwoofers. I've used their 10-inch for years, but this time I chose to test the 12-inch model. With this sub, you get an amplifier built-in. Surprisingly, even with only 300 watts from its built-in amplifier, I was able to hear more bass from this sub over the Hertz Milli Pro sub. To say I'm biased towards the Rockford P300 subwoofer is a fair statement. I've ran a P300 10-inch sub in several of my cars, and it performed wonderfully without giving me any issues. It's compact, easy to install, and comes as a complete package, sub, box, and amp. I recommend this series of subs to anyone wanting a simple plug-and-play bass solution as an upgrade for their factory audio system. I chose the 12-inch this time because it's only $50 more than the 10-inch version, and I have plenty of space for the larger sub. After hooking up the Rockford sub and getting it all set up, it sounded just as good as the 10-inch version, but with a little more output and better low-end due to its larger cone size. Plus, at $390 retail, it's a great deal on a complete bass package. So for the positives, it's all-in-one easy package, not heavy, good output, nice sound, and low price. And one final positive is that it sounds good with different types of music, not just one genre. There are only two real negatives to this subwoofer. While the bass is nice, it's not as clean as the Hertz subwoofer. And although I feel for most buyers looking for this type of solution, the bass will be more than adequate, the other negative would be its output is not overly loud. So don't expect this subwoofer to rattle your neighbor's windows or shake your car to pieces. I would put this as an upgrade over replacing the stock 8-inch subwoofer with an aftermarket replacement. After listening to the Rockford sub, I moved on to my final test sub, which was the SCAR. I looked at a lot of information online about SCAR and found both a lot of good and bad reviews. I figured I'd take a chance and try out their mid-level EVL series subwoofer based on its specs, price, and the fact that I could get it with a matching enclosure. The SCAR enclosures seemed to be well made from all the information that I could gather online. Before I could install the SCAR sub, I had to add another amplifier because the SCAR EVL is rated for 1250 watts RMS. That's over twice as much power as what the Audison amplifier puts out. Plus, the sub enclosure is wired for 1 ohm and the Audison will only go to 2 ohms. For this task, I purchased an Audio Control Epic 1500 amplifier, which puts out 1500 watts at 1 ohm. This will be plenty of power for the SCAR sub. You could also purchase a slightly cheaper Stinger Audio MT1500.1 amplifier as they are essentially the same amp. I chose the audio control version because I like the overall look more. I'm not a big fan of the Stinger logo. Also, I like the audio control bass knob better as well. When the SCAR subwoofer arrived, the first thing that I noticed was just how large the box was and how heavy it was. It's the heaviest subwoofer in this test by far, weighing in at 75 pounds. This is one of the negatives for me about the sub. I wanted to add a nice sound system without loading the car down too much. This sub is definitely a heavyweight. I found the sub was well packaged and there was no damage to the enclosure. As for how the subwoofer sounded, it was loud, the loudest of all three subs. If you want to rattle your car and get the maximum amount of bass for a low price, this would be the subwoofer for you. With this being the sub with the highest power rating, and a large ported enclosure, it had a few advantages over the other two subs. A ported enclosure is a more efficient type of enclosure versus a sealed enclosure. This doesn't always translate into better bass, which is what I found with the SCAR sub. I actually felt the Kicker Comp R sounded a bit better than the SCAR comparing a ported sub versus ported sub. The positives of this sub is it is competitively priced. You're getting a well-made enclosure and sub combo 
for a modest amount of money. The subwoofer is designed to handle a good amount of power and will provide you with a large amount of bass out of just one sub. The negatives for me would be the box. While well made, it is large and heavy. Also, I had a harder time tuning this sub to blend with my front stage. It didn't sound as nice as the other two subs, especially when testing different types of music. I would say it's not as good of an all-around sub as the other two subs. Let's take a look at the REW graph. I've color-coded each subwoofer's graph. Orange is for the Hertz 10-inch sub facing down. Blue is for the Hertz sub facing back. Green is for the Rockford 12. And teal is for the SCAR 12. Each subwoofer's amp has had their gain match to the audio system. No EQ has been applied, and an 80 Hz low pass crossover has been applied. When I reviewed the graph, it confirmed what my ears had already told me. The SCAR subwoofer was the loudest sub, followed by the Rockford, and finally the Hertz. As far as the sound profile of each sub goes, as is the case with the ported enclosure, the SCAR was louder than the other subs, but fell off a cliff below its tuning frequency. You can see this with its very high peak at 38 Hz, followed by a sharp dive below 38 Hz. The Rockford subwoofer isn't as loud as the SCAR overall, but does have more volume at frequencies below 38 Hz. This is due to the nature of a sealed enclosure. The same is true for the Hertz subwoofer. It has the lowest overall volume, but actually has the highest volume at the lower frequencies. Also, its overall curve is smoother than the other two subs, making it the easiest to tune with a DSP. To make it easier to read the graphs, I applied smoothing. With smoothing applied, you can see how little of a difference facing the Hertz sub down or back makes. Facing the sub down provides a little more volume above 40 Hertz, whereas facing the sub towards the rear of the trunk provides a small bump in volume below 40 Hertz. After comparing the two, I would suggest facing the sub down unless you want to take up the least amount of space in the trunk as possible. After testing all three subs, I came to the conclusion I prefer the sound of a sealed enclosure over a ported enclosure. This is why my previous Kicker Comp R subwoofer with a ported enclosure never quite satisfied me. The SCAR sub confirmed this as it was the loudest, but even after a lot of tuning with my DSP, I couldn't get it to blend as well as I would have liked with my front stage. I also think the Kicker sounded better than the SCAR. Between the two sealed sub enclosures, I really liked the sound of the Hertz but couldn't get over the price difference versus the Rockford. Especially when the Rockford was not only half the cost, but it came with its own amp. Also, the Hertz required more tuning to get the volume close to the same as the Rockford, and the Rockford was only being powered by about half the power of the Hertz. This led me back to liking the Rockford P300 series of powered subwoofers. So is the P300 12-inch powered subwoofer my final sub recommendation? Well, no, because as nice as it is, it simply just is not enough. I'm picky and I want more. Now that I know that I want a sealed enclosure, I want to find a great sounding subwoofer that works best in a sealed box and will provide me with the amount of clean, loud bass that I'm looking for. After a lot of further research, I landed on three more subs I'd like to test. They are the JL Audio W612, Kicker Comp Q12, and Stereo Integrity SQL12. I'd really like to hear from you. Let me know what you think about the subs I've tested in this video. What are you currently running and why? I'd love to hear about your subwoofer journey and where it's led you. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe for more content.